as we have already learned about the calculations of the critical values, which plays a vital role in calculating the margin of error that will eventually help us to determine the interval estimates, which are also called the confidence intervals. In this module, we will learn how to calculate the confidence interval for single mean. First of all, we want to know the, what's the sampling distribution of sample mean. As we know that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is normally distributed and having a mean mu x bar equals to mu and variance sigma x bar equals to sigma square over n. We know regardless of where the distribution of mean is located, approximately 95% of the possible values of mean constituting the distribution are within two standard deviation of the mean which earlier we have talked about as two sigma. So we can see it that one minus alpha, when it is equal to 0 0.95, it will cover two sigma on both sides of the mean. Whereas the shaded region will be alpha by two. And our confidence interval of x, x1 bar could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one, or it could be this one. It all depends where they fall for different samples. The two points that are two standard deviation for the mean are that mu minus 2x bar as a first point and mu plus 2x bar. So that the interval will be mu plus minus 2 sigma x bar will contain approximately 95% of the possible values of the sample mean. Let's take an example. Suppose that a researcher is interested in obtaining an estimate of the average level of some enzymes in a certain human population. He takes a sample of 10 individuals and then he determines the level of enzymes in each of the 10 individuals. And for those 10 individuals, he computes a sample mean which turn out to be x bar equals to 22. Suppose further, it is known that the variable of interest is approximately normally distributed with a variance of 45. And now we wish to estimate mu, that is population mean. We already know that an approximate 95% confidence interval for mu is given by x bar plus minus two sigma x bar. When x bar is 22, sigma x bar is equals to sigma square over n under root, which will make it 45, that is a variance, and divided by 10, that is the sample size, and the square root of it. Hence, the answer turn out to be 17.76 and 26.24. 17.76 will provide us the lower confidence limit, and 26.24 will provide us the upper confidence limit. And these are the two values in between there will be 95% of our, our results will fall. Hence, we can say that, that we are 95% confident that population mean is between 17.76 and 26.24. In the example given here, we might prefer rather than two, the more exact value of Z, which is 1.96 that corresponds to a confidence coefficient of 0 0.95 that we have just learned in the critical value module. Researcher may use any confidence coefficient they wish when the most frequently used confidence coefficients are 0 0.90, which make it 90%, 0 0.95, which make it 95%, and 0 0.99 which have associated reliability factor, respectively of 1.645 for 90%, 1.96 for 95%, and 2.58 for 99%. There are a few components of any interval estimate. Let us examine the composition of such an interval estimate, that it contains in its center the point estimate, that is mu. The two that we recognize as a value from the standard normal distribution that tells us 
within how many standard errors lie 95% of the possible values of the sample mean. And having the distribution of the sample mean following the normal probability distribution, hence z could be used as the reliability coefficient. The last component, sigma x bar, is a standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. In general, an interval estimate may be expressed as estimator plus minus reliability coefficient with the product of the standard error. And in particular, when sampling is from the normal distribution with known variance and interval estimate of mu, it may be expressed as x bar, which is an estimator of mu, a point estimator, plus minus z, 1 minus alpha by 2, which provides us the reliability coefficient, and sigma x bar that provides us the standard error. Where z 1 minus alpha by 2 is a value of z to the left of which lies 1 minus alpha by 2 and to the right of which lies alpha by 2 of the area under its curve. Whenever we draw the interval estimates, we can interpret them as probabilistic way or a practical way. Generally, it's recommended to do it both. For our confidence interval for arithmetic mean, the prob probabilistic interpretation would be that in repeated sampling from a normally distributed population with a known standard deviation, 100 into 1 minus alpha percent of all intervals of the form x bar plus minus z 1 minus alpha by 2 sigma x bar will in the long run include the population mean mu. And the practical interpretation would be that when sampling is from a normally distributed population with known standard deviation, we are 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confident that a single computed interval x bar plus minus z 1 minus alpha by 2 sigma x bar contains the population mean. In fact, it gives us the confidence. And our confidence coefficient will tell us that how much confident are we by calculating this confidence interval and determining that if our population mean will fall within this interval or not. Higher the value of this confidence interval will be, more confidence we have that the population mean mu will fall within the interval. It will not always be possible or prudent to assume that the population of interest is normally distributed thanks to the central limit theorem. This will not deter us if we are able to select a large enough sample. For large sample, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normally distributed, regardless of how the parent population is distributed.